Uh, to come back on your question, what is the role of the KVNR? The KVNR is a Dutch Royal Ship Owners Association. Uh, we exist for quite a, a long time by a merge of two uh, ship owners associations. Uh, and that's why we uh, only exist for 25 years uh, officially in the new name. But uh, we exist for a long time. Um, the Dutch uh, Ship Owners Association, just like the Greek and any other uh, ship owners association, is representing its members, the ship owners, ship managers, um, try to do the best uh, in the interest of the industry, um, <clears throat> so nationally, but also, of course, at the European Ship Owners Association and the International Chamber of Shipping and with a lot of other international associations uh, in order to make a difference for the environment and make sure the global rules and regulations also at IMO are being represented in the right way. Um, if you look at what is the development within the Dutch Ship Owners Association, or the KVNR as, as we recall it, mm -hmm. it's quite interesting because what we just did um, is make a complete change in, uh, in our structure. So we just started with a new structure and new strategy, meaning uh, the, that in the past we had a chairman who was a paid chairman and doing a, a daily job. Mm -hmm. We now said, no, 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 let's as ship owners take our responsibility. Uh, we know everything about the industry, so sh we should be the ones ahead of the, of the team, so to say. But it also means that the people here uh, at the Ship Owners Association get more responsibilities themselves. They are going to feed us with, with their, their ideas and thoughts. Uh, and that is the basis of, of the strategy, of course. Um, and uh, we re actually really look forward to that because we think we have a really good team over here. Uh, but it's a different in mindset and uh, that's challenging, but it's also a nice challenge, I think. If we're gonna, uh, a key issue at this moment is LNG. Um, and I think uh, a, a lot of people ask us, okay, what is uh, happening? Is there um, a possibility and is it, or is it an opportunity and are there vessels being built? If I'm correctly, there's about 200 vessels on LNG just now. But LNG, I think, is for the moment being seen as the solution or one of the solutions uh, related to uh, environment and so a very important one. But I think our main uh, challenge with LNG is also that the infrastructure is not there. So if you build on LNG but you cannot bunker your vessel, it's of course uh, a no-go. So the, the uh, structure within Northwest Europe is improving. There's a couple of bunker vessels. I think uh, there's two or three companies who offer that. To, uh, and they have a constant bunker vessels in the area. But in other parts of the world, that's simply not there. So. As long as that's not the case, uh, LNG will be still having a, a, yeah, not a long way to go, but something has to be done. I think I just uh, mentioned what is the main challenge is our infrastructure. <coughs> um, uh, also, there's still a price difference in, a, in an engine, uh, L dual fuel engine uh, or not dual fuel. It's, it's quite, quite a difference. Um, but I think the fact that we are taking our responsibility and knowing what's ahead of us uh, and the cost price rather close to other uh, fuels makes uh, a lot of us uh, or even more people um, looking forward and buying vessels which are LNG or dual fuel. Um, so the question is, what could we do to uh, actually improve more LNG or also do innovations related to an LNG? Uh, I like the question, but uh, I also would like to comment that I think within the industry there's a, a common um, discussion. Um, is LNG the fuel for the future? Or is it, um, I, I, I shouldn't say, but or is it a temporary uh, measurement? I have, uh, uh, environmental related. So uh, there's a lot of discussions going on. So okay, LNG is, is the is the fuel for 
yeah, I don't know if it's 20 years maybe, uh, but the technology innovations go very quickly. So everybody's looking at what comes next. And that is, I think, a challenge for us as industry, because if you invest in a vessel, you expect to invest, or at least the traditional people expect to invest in a vessel for 20 years. But with all the in innovations going on just now, is that the right decision or not? Or is there going to be something complete new structure uh, because of uh, you cannot make a, a million investment and then have to discover after five years, oh sorry, but this was not the best thing to do. So I think that's the main challenge. Is LNG um, a short-term solution or a long-term solution and what is the uh, possible alternative? I think my key message is what I just said, is that uh, um, LNG is now environmentally, the mo one of the most envi environmentally friendly uh, solutions, but it's a mid-term solution. So we need to innovate um, and we need to make sure that for the mid-long term or actually very short term, the in uh, infrastructure is there. Um, and that's the only way to make sure that we take part in the whole environmental discussion and take our responsibility. Yeah, so if you ask me, okay, what is a new um, uh, project that you're working on, uh, then I would have to put on my other hat as a ship owner and ship manager. Uh, and that is related to, actually relates to LNG, because we are building uh, four tankers uh, dual fuel in Holland. Uh, we will be building six tankers uh, uh, on purpose, not dual fuel LNG, because of a shortage of the infrastructure. Um, and we have a couple of cement vessels and dry cargo. So um, these investments and decisions have been made uh, um, years ago. It's a long-term strategy. So uh, is there um, 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 uh, good hope for our industry or is it, um, um, is it the right moment? Yes, we are convinced of that. Um, the market's going up again. So I think uh, uh, everybody's uh, had a lot of yeah, challenging years. Uh, but the market for dry cargo and, and also products is, is going up again. Um, so I think we can all look forward to a very bright future with a lot of innovations which might surprise us and which we think of, oh, is that even possible? Um, and especially the young generation. It's going to be interesting um, uh, what their education should be. Um, and I think the education should also change. Um, in a way that it's now it's very traditional, uh, but the new people on board don't only need to know uh, the traditional roles as we have now. They have to know a lot of IT knowledge, leadership skills, and know how to handle diversity, I think. Uh, and diversity not meaning men, women, but uh, in a broader respect. So uh, if you work with 13 different nationalities, you should at least know what is the cultural background of somebody and with a lot of respect. And I think that's uh, something we can learn from and uh, need to do something with as industry.